I just finished installing a new timing belt, water pump, AC compressor belt, alternator belt, and power steering belt on my 1999 Honda Civic. 1996 through 2000 models are very similar. My skill level at car repair is not real high, however, with careful research and some help from a friend, I was able to successfully complete this repair. If I can do it, you can do it too. Stay tuned and see how we did it. It's recommended that you remove the negative battery lead. I did not do so because I don't have the radio code. And I looked into it. The only way I can retrieve it on this model is to take the radio out of the dash. There is a device that you can purchase that can plug into the cigarette lighter to uh, keep power to the radio so you don't lose your code. Loosen the lug nuts on the driver's side front wheel, jack the front of the car up, put it on jack stands, and shock the back wheels. Remove the driver's side front wheel. Remove the splash shield. It has seven 10 millimeter bolts. Remove the plug wires. Remove this hose. Remove this cable and put it out of the way. Remove the valve cover. There's five 10 millimeter bolts. Remove the oil dipstick. Prior to removing the accessory belts, take note of their tension so you know how tight you need to make them when you reinstall them. A belt that's too loose will squeal. One that's too tight could prematurely wear out bearings. Remove the two bolts from the power steering pump and the ground wire if you have one. After the ground wire and the bolts are removed from the power steering pump, remove the belt, pull the unit off to the side and fasten it out of the way. Also, the reservoir for the fluid can just be pulled up out of the holder and you can also move that out of the way. Remove the AC belt, loosen the adjusting bolt, remove the nut from the center of the idler pulley, remove the idler pulley. There's a bolt that holds the idler bracket in place, remove it. You can't remove the AC belt without removing a bracket on the underside. If the belt's no good, you can just cut it, and then when you're reassembling, you can remove the bracket and slip the belt past the gap. Remove the alternator belt. There's a bolt at the top bracket, and there's another bolt on the underside. Loosen both of those and slip the belt off. There's a, another bolt on the top alternator bracket that has to be removed. Remove the top timing belt cover. There's two 10 millimeter bolts on either side. I'd like to take a moment to talk about the most critical part of this job. Severe damage can occur to the engine if you don't do this right. It's important to set the camshaft at top dead center before you remove the old timing belt. When the camshaft is at top dead center, note the position of the crankshaft. If you remove the old timing belt, 
it is important that you do not move the cam or the crankshaft with the belt removed. Carefully slip the new belt on. If the new belt is installed correctly, it will be snug enough that it can't jump any teeth. Put a 17 millimeter wrench on the crankshaft bolt and turn the engine until the upward on the crankshaft pulley is pointing up. Then fine tune your top dead center by lining the two top dead center marks on the side of the pulley so that they are even with the top of the cylinder head surface. Next, look for the top dead center mark on the crankshaft pulley. Look down from the top of the lower timing belt cover and look for the V. Visually line up the V, the pointer below it, and the white mark on the crankshaft pulley. After you install the new timing belt, ensure that both the camshaft and the crankshaft pulleys are at top dead center. The next thing to do is to remove the crankshaft pulley. You'll need a special tool to hold the crankshaft pulley while you're loosening the crankshaft pulley bolt. Honda makes one, however, you can get one like this at your local auto parts store. It costs $25. While trying to remove the crank pulley bolt, we split a Craftsman 17 millimeter half inch drive socket. We then rented an electric impact wrench. Now that didn't break the bolt loose, but heated it up and caused enough vibration to allow us to loosen it with the half inch drive, a breaker bar, and a five foot pipe for a lever. Save yourself some time and trouble. Get a deep 17 millimeter impact socket and rent an impact wrench and compressor. To keep the crank puller tool from falling off, wedge something between it and this gap. Uh, I have a wrench in here right now, but you could use a small piece of wood. Put a one half inch breaker bar on the crank pulley tool and have it braced against the ground. Then put your 17 millimeter socket on the pulley bolt and turn it counterclockwise. When the crank pulley bolt comes loose, it'll probably make a loud sound. It'll sound like you broke something. Remove the crankshaft pulley from the crankshaft. Be careful not to lose the small metal key. Drain the cooling system. Open up the radiator cap. There's a drain cock midway under the front bumper. Open it. There's also a drain to drain the block located above the oil filter. We did not open that up. We did just get a little bit of water out of the block when we removed the water pump, but it wasn't significant. Remove the engine mount bracket. There's three bolts. Prior to removing the engine mount, the engine needs to be supported from underneath. Place a jack under the oil pan. Put a piece of wood between the oil pan and the jack and support the engine. The oil dipstick tube has a clamp on the lower timing belt cover. You have to get a screwdriver in here to pop that off and either try to wiggle it to get it out or wiggle it and pry on the bottom of it to get it loose. Remove the 
lower timing belt cover. There's six 10 millimeter bolts. Remove the crank sensor and push it off to the side. Don't get any antifreeze on it. Position the crankshaft pulley at top dead center. You may have also noticed in earlier illustrations that there is a top dead center mark on the gear on the crankshaft. There's also a pointer. Those should line up. Note the tension on the timing belt so you know about how tight it should be when you install the new one. Remove the tensioner. Remove the timing belt. Remove the old water pump and replace it with the new one. Reinstall the tensioner. Make sure you get it on the peg. Don't tighten it down yet. I spoke with a Honda mechanic who has an identical car with 240,000 miles on it and he has not replaced the tensioner so I chose not to replace mine. This car only has 105,000 on it. Install the new timing belt in the sequence shown on the diagram. Install the crank sensor. Remove the round rubber plug from the lower timing belt cover, then install the lower timing belt cover. Install the crankshaft pulley. There are several methods to adjust the tension of the timing belt. I chose to follow the procedure in the maintenance manual. With the camshaft pulley at top dead center, have a helper apply the palm of their hand to apply pressure to the belt on top of the camshaft. Then turn the crankshaft counterclockwise to tighten up the belt. About one and a half teeth on the camshaft. Tighten the tensioner adjusting bolt. Eric the car guy has a nice video that shows this being done. I'll put a link in the box below the video to his video. Put the camshaft at top dead center and check the timing mark on the crankshaft to ensure that everything is still properly aligned. If it is, then manually turn the crankshaft to ensure that everything is working properly. Check the timing marks one more time then reassemble everything. Don't forget to bleed the cooling system and to apply liquid gasket to the four corners of the valve cover. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.